now we've uh, come to a point where we've fixed quite a bit of these fractures and different ones and the most complex ones and we know all of that and yet there are times when things don't work out as we want it to. I'm going to start with a very famous and common case that I keep showing very often. He's a 77, Kiran is already smiling. 77 year old active gentleman. He plays golf every weekend. He had this fracture. How many of us would conserve this? I will ask the patient. What? This particular patient, I would ask and if he tells whatever. What <laughs> <laughs> this patient teaches the world what to do with distal radius fractures and decided that he's going to conserve it. So I met him four days later at the Maharashtra orthopedic meeting with a splint. And he was conserving himself with a splint. So I was a little worried. I said, sir, do kevar to dalne do. He's allowed me to use his case for educational purposes only, not for laughing. But then day 10, you can see a little bit of collapse. So the framework is collapsing. So I'm not showing you only plates and things like that. I'm trying to also bring in the fact that we are dealing with a large number of conserved fractures. And why do we see these x-rays later and worry, oh my God, what happened here? So that's what we're going to learn through this case. At day 46, now that is looking significant. And the numbers that Gautam just threw out, two millimeters, this is going beyond that. You, there's no comparative x-ray, but I'm sure you can see the difference between day one and now. And yet, golf continues. He's working hard. At 160 days, he's healed very nicely. And if Abraham Kohli's was alive, he would say somewhere in the distant future, etc., etc. Like how Pandit Nehru was talking about on Independence Day kind of thing, no? We quote that in every lecture, which is good for a person who has no demands. He's 77 years old, but no, he's 27 years old. Because he's playing golf, he's doing work, he's working 16 hours a day. So you can't compare that. But now he has a lot of pain, discomfort, cannot do his day-to-day -day work. Factors that we uncovered too late, that he's a vegetarian, He's not on any supplements. His DEXA score is horrible. His age is 77. There was comminution. It was intra-articular. Everything that LaFontaine said in 1980 something, we did not consider. We did not fix it. And we are paying the price. This is another patient. Again, comminuted. We left the discussion halfway. What, what happened? What happened? Did we continue that way or we... We did another shortening for him. And he's doing well. He's back to playing golf, etc., etc., etc. But it took him eight months to heal. And ulnar shortening osteotomy sometimes does not heal for a long, long, long time. So that's a very, very difficult thing. We actually did it with the prescribed plates and things like that. And yet it didn't work. We don't have those plates. I think Uma is the only one who's manufacturing those plates at present, but he doesn't have the jig yet. <clears throat> so here's another patient who had a fracture that, how many of us will conserve this? No hands, thank you very much. Something is getting in there. How many of us would put K wires? Exactly, many of us would think in terms of putting K wires. Dr. Karkan is mera punchline mat nikalo yaar. Would you K wire it like this? Hemat is already waiting to kill me or something. You wouldn't do this, right? But this was what was done. Now, when you put K wires, remember the ulnar side, what Gautam was talking about is so important. Because when you have a concomitant, significant ulnar sided fracture, these are bound to collapse. There's so much of instability there that uh, just a K wire or multiple K wires, as many as you can put. I've got an X-ray with 12 K wires. I didn't bring it here. I don't want to ridicule people, but 12 K wires. What is it telling you? One did not work. Two did not work. Three did not work. Nine did not work. Come on. Somewhere wake up and say, no, I'm not using KYS for this one. But that is what happens. Now, here's what happened. 
collapsed. May be healed, may not be healed. Ulnar side also collapsed. And three of the fingers have collapsed. So the extensors have also taken a hit. Wrong choice? Of course wrong choice. 87 years old, intra-articular ulnar fracture, severely comminuted. Just because the patient is 87 years old, I don't think you should neglect them. The quality of that bone looks fairly okay. I don't think a plate would have done any harm to her. A locking plate is meant to be used in this instance. That is why it was made. So put a locking plate, get the patient moving. That is the patient who wants to have function of the hand to be independent. The fact that she's in your clinic. Otherwise, you would have been in her house giving her a cast. An 87 who's bedridden does only require a cast and pain relief, palliative care. But an 87 who's come to your clinic and is willing to get an operation done, do a good operation for that patient. <clears throat> Right, and I'm just going to take a few minutes for two cases more because most of them otherwise would be malunions, which is not my topic. Yeah. Yes. I would. I definitely would fix the ulna because I want to mobilize the patient with a plate. Oh, there are two millimeter plates. You do not need to restrict your implants to what the set is sent to you. You can borrow from another set, a 2 millimeter set, a hand module set is easily available. So you can get a 2 millimeter screws and plates and you get different configurations of that and you can use that and that will do well as well. So here's a patient who had this buttress with no screws in the distal uh, fragment. Was this enough? Obviously not. This was bound to happen and it came off. And what you see is such a common thing because the lunate is putting pressure on that rim fragment which Pankaj showed how you can fix it down and that requires to be treated and we treated it with this. Now the reason for putting up this uh, uh, case is because we spoke a lot about the ligaments and how you need to repair those ligaments. Now here instead of doing a repair of the ligaments, what I've done is I've pinned down the, the lunate in the best position possible. So if you see the scaphoid is standing in extension, the lunate is sitting in the right position and there's a wire that goes from a stable part of the distal radius into the lunate holding out the wrist. So it's not that you need to repair the ligaments always. Some of us don't know those ligaments. Some of us just will put in stitches and think we've got the ligaments in place. You might depend upon a wire for a temporary period which holds that and allows nature to repair those ligaments. So you don't have to actually stitch them together. If they are together, they're going to heal together. Why don't they heal otherwise? Because we start early mobilization. So we don't allow them to, there's a big momentum that forms which then allows subluxation. So if you hold it there and allow fibrosis to occur, that's what we are expecting the ulna styloid to do, fibrous union. Let fibrosis help you. Don't make it, and we've seen what Heyman said, eight months later, the wrist is still capable of getting back its full movements. So we must harness that knowledge and use it to our advantage. Okay, here's one of my cases. A well-known gentleman, and that was the fixation that I did. Adequate, it's in a lecture titled Collapsing Framework. How can it be adequate? But would you come away now? This is a lovely thing that I, learned, uh, I learned from a patient last week when she said that he or she was it, that I would never leave the operation theater with that x-ray. So it's from Hong Kong. The statement is from Hong Kong. There's a surgeon, second surgeon who looked at an x-ray and said, oh, I wouldn't leave the theater with your wrist looking like that. Would you leave the theater with the wrist looking like that? I would. I did. Any, any problems with this? Pankaj, Hemant, anyone? I left this. Yeah. What would you like to see in the lateral view that... You can't see here. 
I think you could have put the plate slightly more uh, distal towards the watershed line. Yes. <clears throat> But this then one. there are soon grades. I don't think any of us discussed the soon grades, but I think that is an important thing. But two weeks later, obviously it collapsed. I took him back into the theater and that's one of the toughest jobs for you to be able to capture that patient again, give him so much confidence that I have done a but I will not do it Damn, damn tough. But when you do that, you can go home that day and say yes. This is a good day that I could convince my patient to come back to me and not go to somebody else. Sir, may I? Yes, please. So, like the, most of these uh, uh, extra articular plates, I, I think they, their uh, position needs to be decided by where this column sits with respect to the radius. Probably. When you said what was probably lacking, probably that, that is what was probably lacking, I think. Yeah, a little more distal as someone mentioned. But my worry was, if you look at the lateral view, then it, it would definitely sit a little further out uh, in the, and come to the soon grade to, uh, 1. A little more distal could be a broader plate. A broader plate, yes. But I, I, I mean, the, the, the difference is, uh, about three to four millimeters, yeah. and that should have probably done. So a little distal and a little broader plate would have probably been a better idea. Yes. Yes. You see a gap in the articulation. So when you put a plate, mm -hmm. you should never see a gap in the articulation. Because seeing a gap in the articulation, where something is going to skip. It, so what uh, Gautam is saying is that you're seeing a gap in the articular surface. When you completed your fixation, you should not see a gap in the articular surface. So these are little, little things that are very important. Yes, Himan. Sudhir, uh, you went with the idea of fixing the lunate diaphragm chain in this case? I think so. Okay, no. If you are uh, knowing that you are fixing the lunate diaphragm or addressing the lunate diaphragm in this plate, why not give a plastic flexion so that your lunate does not force that uh, fragment back into the same uh, problem again? If you had realized that it was uh, unstable. If I had realized that I was inadequate, I would have been a little more careful and kept him in a cast for a longer period of time. I would, I would give a plastic flexion. So that the unit does not force, cause any more force on this. Okay. So why why is Heman saying keep the lunate in flexion? Doesn't it seem counterintuitive? Counter if you come into flexion, it's going to push it out. No, but the lunate spins outwards and puts its pressure on the dorsal side in flexion. That's why Hemant is saying keep it in flexion if you have this. Brilliant point. Very well brought out. So, lots of learning points from something that looked so nice and adequate. Yes, Jayesh. Improper way to find out this is going to happen, the instability that has caused the collapse later on. Is there a test or something that you can do it from the step? What, what we normally, yeah, it's a good question, but what we normally do is we put, as soon as I finish my fixation, I always put the patient through a range of movements check the pronation supination, check the shock test, and then see it under C-arm. So if something's obviously loose and coming off, it probably would happen. But I don't know of any other method. Yes, sir. Said, uh, 77 year patient and 87 year patient. You show the uh, So those patients were active patients. Absolutely, 100% that point is well taken. Almost 60 to 70% of the patients of that age with that kind of fracture will get a plaster from me. 
close reduction under anesthesia or not, they will get a plaster from me, but I will note it on paper that there is, we have discussed all of this. And at subsequent meetings, I will write down if they're still un, uh, um, unwilling for a surgery, I'll put it down on paper that I've suggested surgery, but the patient is unwilling. They will malunite, and at some stage, you might just do a direct and get away with a very, very good result. So they will have fairly good function. There's no question about that. Not all of them require an operation. But like I said, the ones that are very active, yes, I would offer an operation. So it's basically the micro fractures which are not evident and when you put a lot of force with your plate then those micro fractures become important. And those are the ones that you're talking about that tend to jump out. Yes, a rim plate would probably be an answer, but there's also another answer which I'm quickly going to show, and that's a very distal fracture like that. And what we do is do the spring wire technique where you pass two thin wires. You could do what Pankaj did using ligament uh, uh, stitches in the ligament, or you could just pass 0.8 or 1 millimeter wires down towards the uh, shaft, and once you pass that, that's the wire going in. That's the second wire going in, holding up the articular surface. Then you bend these wires. The plate was already pre-placed actually. Put back the plate with the wires under the plate. So now you're pushing the plate up. The offset of the plate becomes a little more. So you've got to be careful where the position of that plate is. So you'll have to keep it a little more proximal so that it doesn't interfere with the soft tissues. And that's how it looks. So these are lovely spring wires that you can use, but use very thin wires, otherwise the plate just gets lifted off far too much. And your bend, you can make the bend and then just tap this thing back in. So pull out the wire a little bit, make the bend so you get a nice, a cute bend, and then tap it back in and then put the plate back on. And that's what it looks like. Goes on to heal, and that's the soon grades, and that's the result. Thank you very much.